Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're all well wherever you are and whatever you're up to. I'm Lauren and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you our lovely new window display that we have here in the Guthrie and Ganny shop. We've got such a lovely big bay window at the front of the shop. Always floods the shop with lots of light even when it is raining outside. So we love to make nice displays for those that can pass by the shop and come into the shop and visit. But I know that so many of our lovely customers do shop online as well so hopefully this video just gives you a little bit of a taste of what is happening in the shop at the moment. The theme of the window display is all around the new Dashwood collection called Playtime that has a couple of different panels that you can use to make different items. So we've got all of these items in the window and then we've just embellished it and accessorized it with some lovely handmade garments as well. So first of all, I'll talk you through the garments that we have included in the window. And then after that, I'll show you the panels that come with this collection of fabrics from Dashwood, this Playtime collection, and give you a little bit of a tutorial and some ideas of different things that you can do with them as well. So we had three adult mannequins in the window, each with a different outfit on, and then we've got a child's one as well. So we have got the Tilly in the Buttons Sky dress, and that is made using a really love lovely ochre double gauze fabric. We've got lots of other colorways of double gauze as well that you could use to make that dress. Dress. And then we've got some Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans made out of a rigid denim and that is paired with the Merchant and Mills ED top. And that is also made using a double gauze. We don't have that exact one left in stock anymore, I'm afraid. We'd made it for a window display last year. But as I said, we do have lots of other double gauze in stock and lots of other, other colourways too. And then the third garment is the Cashmere Appleton Wrap Dress. And we featured that pattern in a kit that we did last year using some really beautiful made in the UK um, jersey medal fabric in this lovely deep teal colour and we do still have a few of those kits left as well which have now been reduced so yeah you can check them out online. I will put a blog post together too that goes along with this video so I'll link to that in the description of it so if you're looking for any of the patterns or fabrics that I mention then all of them will be linked and grouped together in the blog post that matches this video. And then finally on our little child's mannequin we had the geranium dress and that is also made in a double gauze as well that one has got the little embroidered colorful spots on it which is really nice but that does come in a few other colorways too so lots of choice if you want to make your own version of all of those garments and then onto the panel itself so as I said before there's two different panels that come with this collection there is one that is the alphabet. So that is this one here. So it comes as like the panel, you buy it as a panel. So it comes as like a big sheet of fabric like this. And then you can turn that into a quilt, which is what I did here. So I just used one of the coordinating backing fabrics, which we do have three different ones of that you could use that sort of coordinate with it. And then yet yeah, you can quilt it and then bind it. So I have already done a video which is a bit like a sort of cheats guide to doing a patchwork quilt because when you get a panel like this that already has a sort of um, square slash rectangular design on it, it's really easy to then make that look like a patchwork quilt just by quilting it with a wadding in the middle and then a backing fabric. So I will also link to the other video and blog post that I've done that gives you a lot more in-depth instruction of how to do that. The difference with this one, with this particular panel, is that because the, the squares that make up each letter on the quilt, it isn't in um, columns so it's in rows but because there's 26 letters in the alphabet and that's obviously not fitting totally even into the grid of this design it means that the lines going vertically down the panel don't all line up so instead what I did was I used my walking foot to quilt horizontally in between each row or each line of letters and then I used my free machine embroidery foot. So on my machine this is what it looks like. 
and you attach it onto your sewing machine and when you use this type of machine embroidery foot you have to lower the feed dogs on the machine so that means the little sort of teeth that grip and feed the fabric through the machine have to be lowered down so I've got a, a fat, bit more of a fancier electronic machine so it's a button that you press on my machine but it might be that you've got a little lever on the arm of the sewing machine at the back that you can use just to lower those feed dogs and what it does is allows you to essentially draw with your sewing machine rather than the fabric getting fed through the machine and sewing in a straight line you can literally sew in any direction because those feed dogs are not guiding and feeding the fabric through so it allows you to go around different shapes and just sew in different directions so it does take a little bit of getting used to and you also have, you're also likely going to have to regulate the stitch length yourself. There are some quite fancy quilting machines that you can regulate the stitch length on when you're doing free machine embroidery, but typically the, the length of the stitch is dictated by you moving the fabric yourself. So you have to sort of grip the fabric in a way and then just move it around in order to stitch where you want it to. So you could just pick what part of each lettered section that you wanted to go around. It might be you go around the letter itself or part of the design that is within it and really I think you have to embrace the more sort of organic and freestyle nature of this don't expect a perfect stitching that is all equal in length and not you know it, it might be that it sort of goes off track a little bit in some places nobody's really going to look that closely and I find the first few squares that I did were definitely a bit wonky and as I got a bit more practice and got just a feel for how to control it and control the speeds and moving the fabric through then I was able to just go through with a bit more precision but it does just give a nice quilted effect and it will sort of bring out certain elements of the letter in the panel as well if you didn't want to do that then you could definitely just sew individual lines straight down in between each one it just means that sometimes you're probably going to have to sort of start and stop a little bit more like that line there for example um you know it go, goes straight down from the top but then there's a, a panel in the way there so you wouldn't want to really stitch straight down in between that one you'd have to stop your line of stitching and then pick it back up here again to go straight down so it'd be a bit more start and stop to do straight lines but you could definitely just do that if you didn't fancy trying the free machine embroidery around the letters themselves um but yeah, the, in, in terms of the principle of everything else, of layering it up with the wadding and the backing fabric and putting the binding on as well, I do have that other much more specific in-depth video tutorial and blog post as well that you can use to learn how to put the, the binding on and yeah, sort out your backing and your wadding and all of that kind of thing too. So yeah, if you're, if you're quite new to quilting um, and, or patchwork and that sort of thing, I guess it's not really patchwork because the patchwork bit is done for you. Um, but if you're quite new to quilting you mostly do dress making just fancy sort of dipping your toes in it it's quite a good way to do it because you get a really nice quilt um and yeah half the job's done because the front panel is already sewn together so that's the quilt panel and then the other panel that comes with this collection is this one here which has got lots of different elements to it so if I hold it out just so that you can sort of start to see some of the different bits that are in it so there's um, this sort of hollow sunshine one there's a nice um, elephant as well that you can sew around um, and a little pear too and then a sort of rainbow section so you could do different things with this the majority of them I turned into cushion covers so I just cut out the panel and that became the front of the cushion cover and then I just made really simple envelope style cushion covers for the for the reverse so I just cut out two rectangles using um, the backing fabric so again as I said we've got three different options of sort of coordinating fabric that you could use for that and I just um, made sure that I had enough for a bit of an overlap in the middle and that I could and, and enough for a hem allowance as well so you hem the two edges where the overlap and the envelope will be and then just sew that together 
turn it around the right way and you've got your cushion cover. I did find that some of the sizes were sort of non-standard cushion sizes. So it might be that you have got maybe an old cushion pad that you could sort of squish down a little bit and fit into the cushion. I managed to do that with some of them. Or it might be that you want to make your own custom size cushion pads to go in. And you could do that using just toy stuffing or it might be that you take the stuffing from another cushion pad that you've got. And we do sell some fire retardant um, fabric that's just like a sort of lining type fabric so you could use that to make like the casing of the cushion pad and then stuff it with either toy stuffing or with a, you know if you've got an old cushion cover a cushion pad rather that you want to repurpose you could use that so then you can make like your own custom size cushion that's then going to fit, fit in the cushion cover itself so it's then easy you know it's easy to take the cushion cover off and wash it then and um, so you can do that what i did for the more oblong ones so that hello sunshine one and then there's one that is like raindrops as well with a little bit of a cloud which is cute they're a bit more like a sort of typical pillowcase style that would be more like a child size pillowcase to be honest so that you know it's quite long and thin so instead of doing like a symmetrical envelope style on that one, I made the envelope a bit more like what you would actually see in a pillowcase. So I cut a smaller rectangle and hemmed one of the longer edges. And that smaller rectangle then, once it's hemmed, then gets gets sewn onto the side of the front panel and then pressed to the wrong side of the fabric and then you're just going to layer that up with your larger backing section so the backing section of the cushion is just the same size as the front panel plus a little bit for hem allowance as well so you hem that 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 edge first and then just sew it all together you can finish off your seam allowances as well if you wanted with an overlocker or just on the sewing machine and then when you turn it the right way round, I like to do this little trick at the corners that makes the corners really nice and sharp and pointy. So essentially what you're doing is folding the seam allowances back on themselves along that straight line of stitching. And then you reach inside the cushion cover and using your index finger and your thumb, you have to just sort of pin feel through and pinch that little stack or that little bundle of folds of fabric that you've made. Keep a nice tight hold of it pull it through so you're turning it the right way around and then you can just sort of wriggle and push the, the corner out and it just makes the corner really nice and pointy but it means it's supported as well because you've got all of those folds of fabric nice and flat on the inside so you can give that little trick a go on the cushion covers. So yeah, most of the panels I did make into just cushion covers, a style of an envelope cushion cover. Then for the elephant shape and the pear shape, you can make that into effectively like a little bit of a stuffed toy really, um, or a shaped cushion. So you can get a bit of the, of the coordinating backing fabric and just make sure it's a little bit bigger than the dotted line that goes around the, the outline of the shape and then just sew it on. Um, having that set, having like the elephant or the pair like closest to you when you sew just so you can see through the back of the fabric to stitch you know to stitch round it on the right line and then just trim the seam allowances down you have to clip into any sort of pointy corners just so that it's going to turn round the right way and then obviously make sure you leave a gap so that you can turn it round what I did before I started turning it round was just pressed back the seam allowances of where I'd left my gap and it just it just makes it a bit easier to get a crisper edge there later when you come to sew it and it's also going to be easier if you try to leave your gap on a bit of the shape that is kind of straighter it's easier to do it there than it is on like a curved section of it. So I just left it at the sort of back of the elephant when I did that. So yeah, then turn it round the right way and give it a good press. So make sure you're sort of poking out all of the shape of the elephant. And then you can just use toy stuffing to fill it up and then just hand sew the little gap closed. So then you get um, these cute little sort of stuffed stuffed kind of toys or little yeah like little mini cushions I guess and then what I decided to do for this the actual rainbow 
panel was make it into like a bit of a wall hanging really which is what you can sort of see the back of hanging behind me here so to do that I basically quilted it in the same way that I quilted the quilt so with some wadding and then I just used some plain lining backing fabric for that and then I bound it in the same way that you would bind the quilt so again you can look at that other blog post or tutorial um, on the uh, the video or the blog post to see how to do that so it's almost just like a little mini quilt that you're making and then I decided to add some tassels along the bottom so I had some scrap yarn that was left over from another project that just happened to sort of match and um, so unfortunately we don't sell yarn anymore but um, you know if you're if you're also a knitter or you like wool then maybe you've got something kicking around that you could use and um, if you don't and you want to do this project and you're looking into maybe buying something it was like a mercer-sized cotton yarn that I had so it's, it's 100 percent cotton but it's got that kind of sheen to it um, and I think it's maybe a four ply or a double knit but it wouldn't it wouldn't matter too much the weight of it really you're still going to be able to make a nice little tassel so they're really easy to make and um, you just need like a rectangular shape to wrap the yarn around in whatever length that you want your tassel to be I happen to use my hot hammer to do this but you could literally just use a bit of cardboard it doesn't have to be anything technical and then depending on how full you want your tassel to be and how thick or thin your yarn is you just um, wrap it round and round and round and round I think for this weight of yarn I wrapped it around 30 times but you could just have a little practice and see sort of what's looking good with the type of yarn that you've got so once I've wrapped it round, I then just threaded through another bit of yarn around one of the, the edges of my rectangle and tied it so that was going to start to hold it together. And then just use scissors to cut the bottom of it. So this is your tassel sort of coming into shape now so you can put your rectangular template thing to the side. And then to get that sort of rounded bit at the top, you just take another bit of yarn and then place your tassel bit on top of that and tie it round. So then you get that little sort of dome effect at the top with your tassel hanging out the bottom. Now it's likely that you have to do a little bit of a haircut on the tassel at the bottom just to even it out. And even once it's all hanging up, um, it might be that you still have to sort of trim it a little bit. When it came to actually attaching it onto the panel that I'd quilted I just used a wool needle so it had quite a big eye so I could thread the yarn through the eye of the needle and then I managed to just sort of ease it through the fabric by going through the binding um, from the inside and then tying a knot so again depending on the thickness of yarn that you've got you, you may or may not be able to do that but I just made enough tassels until the, the spacing sort of looked like I wanted it to, it looked nice and full, but not not bursting, you know. So you can kind of use your own your own eye to judge what is going to work with the with the thickness of of yarn that you've got there. And then to make like a little loop to hang it up, I just plaited a length of the yarn again, and then so that the wall hanging hangs straight, you just need a bit of wooden doweling at the top. And you could we've just used drawing pins to sort of attach the the hanging loop onto that but you could kind of if you didn't want to see the the dowling at the top you could kind of just sew that into the back of the panel if you wanted to hide it and then you'd you know you'd be able to hang it up against your wall so it's just another idea of something that you can do with all of these different bits that are in the panel i mean the other thing that you could do is use them as part of a patchwork quilt so you could use these panels and then make smaller patchwork blocks to go around it and then make your you know your own front quilt panel out of patchwork that way so you could do that with it as well but yeah it's just it's just a really lovely collection and I really like the color palette in it as well it's I think it's I think it's quite bright but it's not like primary colors it's just a little bit more muted so yeah I think it looks really nice so I hope you've enjoyed having a little look around our lovely window display and if you're local you're able to visit the shop then do come in and see us you can see it in person and if not then then yeah, you know what's happening in the shop now. You're all up to date. So um, yeah, it's like a bit of a virtual visit really. So thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, then just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. And I'll see you next time. Bye.